Hi, David. You've been asking me the, for some information on the time I was in the service. And I did copy a lot of photographs I took while I was in the service. And I'm going to show them now, hopefully, and put them on this videotape and say a little bit about them. So as I go along, I'll mention the, where they were taken and a little bit about them. The, in general, I went in the Army in November 27, 1943 and got out in May 24, 46. So that covers that period. I was in Europe just before the World War II ended, left for England on March 25, 45, and came back to the U.S. on May 13, 1946. So a lot of the pictures, well, most of the pictures are in Europe, in Germany and, and on leave in Switzerland. I didn't take many pictures before I got over there. I guess I didn't have a camera. So let's start these things and see what, what. Let's see, I'll push this button here. Okay. There, the first picture. A couple of army buddies in Ger southern Germany. Oh, I found out this man's name is Lambert. Most of the names I've forgotten completely. But it's interesting that you do remember the faces. Ah, you recognize that guy, of course. Uh, Marion's here too, and she's going to help if I mess up a little bit. Uh, that one I don't recognize. This one is a picture of a buddy, not very good. Okay, now we're in the southern Germany in the Alps. At least I think that's where this is because that's where the mountains would have been. Uh, now I have no idea who this is, but it's a vehicle and a woman standing in front of it. Hmm, interesting. This is a typical, oh, this is where I stayed in south of Munich after the war was over in a transportation office. This is Rudolf Hess's old estate. And we were staying in this house where a dining room was and so on. And that was a rather interesting place. This is the river that went by, the Isar River that's south of Munich. And we were right on this river, which was very, very picturesque place. And again, I have no idea what this is, but some people there in southern Germany. That looks more like a lake. Uh, southern Germany has a lot of lakes. And this is another one. Beautiful country. Uh, now, some of the pictures I might have copied from photographs that somebody else took, but I think most of these are the ones I took. But, of course, that's a, that's a long time that memory's kind of iffy on that. Oh, beautiful snow-covered mountains. We're in the Alps in, in Bavaria. Of course, I don't remember the names of any of the mountains or the lakes. But I could look on a map and probably remember a little bit about it. This was, of course, uh, completely different than present time. I imagine this all is fairly well developed by now. Oh, this is the German Autobahn, equivalent to our interstates. And we traveled along that for a while. And, and oh, here's Munich after the war. We were very close to Munich, and it was really pretty much destroyed. But the, some of the cathedrals were still standing. And, oh, I think we've already seen that picture. But Munich was very much damaged. The rest of Bavaria was not. Here, let me, let me pause this a minute. i uh, seen this picture already, but I was describing the Rudolf Hess's estate that, we, that I was stationed at after the war. This is just south of Munich. And this was a district transportation office. The office there ran all the trains in southern Germany. And I was part of that. I was really sort of a clerk. Anyway, there's some pictures here. I'll go ahead now and see if this works. Uh, pictures of the building we stayed in. Yeah, there it is. That's Rudolf Hess's house. He was one of Hitler's henchmen. And evidently fairly wealthy. A house there. Okay, now let's see if I can do this right. I'm going to pause this and tell you about this is a group from my unit on a typical transportation truck that was used in World War II. And this must have been just right, maybe right at the end of the war, I would guess. Okay, well, let's see if I can go on now and do this right. If I push play, 
Yeah, okay, that's just another scene of the truck. And in the background there's a half track, which were common in World War II. Some of these pictures aren't too swift, but anyway, the ones I took. Oh, this is one of the airplanes along the Audubon that Hitler stored them along the road. Now, I may have mentioned this already, but anyway, I'll get it, I'll get it going here eventually. And of course, the first thing you do is get up on top of one and get posed for a picture. <laughs> That's me, I think. Remember, these were all propeller-driven trains, planes, no jets in World War II. And if you notice, that last picture had a Nazi flag on the back of it. Again, this is bef right after the war, so there's no civilian traffic yet. Kind of strange to see a major highway like this with no, no traffic. Again, this is all in southern Germany, which was not too much damaged by the war, except for Munich and maybe some of the other cities. And again, that's the Autobahn. That's the airplane again. These pictures are sort of messed up, but anyway, there's a statue of something. <laughs> now, I'm not even sure exactly where this was but I assume it was in the Munich area. And this is something that wasn't destroyed by the war. Again, a cathedral in the background. And there's a group of us on the stairway. Again, you see we're wearing uniforms. Whoops, I don't know what this is. Must have been... <laughs> it's a girl. Yeah, it's a girl. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true, yeah. Oh, this is kind of interesting. Let me pause this a minute. These, <laughs> these pictures are really messed up, but this is the way they're on the videotape. Uh, this is in Switzerland now. I took a leave in October 1945. Uh, the army was, or the, well, all the services were sending people, soldiers to Switzerland for leave. And this is Bern, Switzerland, where we entered, or close to where we entered, and they have a famous bear show there. And I don't really see any bears in the middle of that picture, but the GIs are sitting in the foreground here, and they put on a show with the bears. And the, what you see, that round thing, is a bear pit. Very primitive. They're just really primitive. Okay. Let's start it going again here. Enough about the bears. Oh, yeah, they had this thing here for the soldiers to take your pictures. You'll see yours truly in a minute, which I'm sure you'll enjoy. <laughs> Again, I have no idea who these people were. There I am. Isn't that a great picture? Oh, I knew you'd like that. I should pause that one. <laughs> now back to the bears again. It's sort of like a circus show there. They had them trick. They did them do tricks, I suppose, and all that stuff. I suspect that was pretty hard on the bears. But I must have been impressed by this or something. <laughs> uh, there's more pictures than you probably want to see of the bears. Okay, let's get with something else here. Ah, okay. This looks like, I'll uh, pause this a minute, that looks like one of the places where we were stationed. Quite often we, we were stationed in housing, local housing of uh, people. They just, the army just kicked them out of their houses, which is one of the tragedies of war. And so I suspect this is one of those places. But again, that's uh, so long ago, I don't remember. Yep, that must be what it is. Again, this is one of the soldiers in our unit. Oh, there's a good one. That's me on top of a armored, I was in the armored artillery. Whoops, wait a minute here. Hey, I think it went backwards, pardon me. Well, anyway, let's go to that picture again. <laughs> there, that one. Okay, I'll push the right button this time. This is a... I was in the armored artillery right at the end of the war, and this is one of the tanks units that spotted, uh, sported a big gun. So it wasn't exactly a tank, it's really a mobile artillery piece, if, that's, if you're interested in that. Here we go. I have to say, luckily, I didn't have to fire in combat. I think that was, very, I was very lucky. But I was in combat right at the end of the war. And there they all lined up. 
and there I'm not sure what this is but a map along the road well what do you know a girl again now you probably expect me to tell stories about this but I have no idea <laughs> these might have been for other soldiers too there I am look at that this was some kind of a housing place and again, it's pretty vague in my memory. Looks like the half tracks are camouflaged here by the trees, so this is pretty recent after the war was over. They were sitting on probably one of the places we stayed. There's a couple of the local kids, and then there are the armored uh, artillery pieces again. And a typical street in a town in Bavaria, you know, it's not paved. Oh, there I am, C Battery, 423rd Armored Artillery, Armored Artillery Battalion, 10th Armored Division. In some of these pictures, I can't not remember. Huh, maybe I should censor some of these, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> oh, there's the train station, what do you know? That's interesting. And again, this must have been in Bavaria. That looks like a pretty fancy house, like on the Riviera. Oh, I think we're on the Riviera now. I did have a leave to go to the French Riviera for, a f I don't know, a few days or a week. And so that was a very interesting place, and there are several pictures in here of that, as you'll see. Now, there were people here. Of course, this is France, and they had been out of the war for a while. Let me see, hmm, typical buildings along the Mediterranean, this is the Mediterranean Ocean. And that tip a ship there, this looks like a, maybe a victory ship. There were a lot of these in World War II, made that transport troops and et cetera. And a sights, local sightseeing bus, huh, must have been used for soldiers. Well, let's, uh, I'll, I'll eliminate a few of the pictures here because these aren't probably interesting to you. Like I don't even remember them especially. Let's record a couple here. There's a, again, we were out in the ocean, I guess, on a boat, and there were some beautiful clouds building up. And that was very picturesque. Oh, you see the architecture is so different than it is in this country. Well, I'll say. Yeah. Of course, these buildings are probably fairly old, although that and I suspect this is one of the towns, like Nice, which is, was a French town along the Riviera. That's probably where this was taken. That looks like we've seen that already. Let me pause this again. In the Rivoli, or Rivoli, I don't know, probably a hotel. Yeah, Hotel Rivoli. And a typical street, you know, there's trees and bicycles, a lot of bicycles. Sub-district transportation office, visitors parking. This is by, back in Munich now, I guess. And there I am in my, all my beauty. <laughs> and there, you can read that one for yourself. Something verboten means no goods. It probably means entrance verboten. This is probably back in Munich again, but it's not a very good picture. But you can see some of the destruction wrought by the war. They had a lot of electric lines there for transportation. I don't know if they were working at this time, but that's typical of a big city in Germany. They had electrical, or like streetcars. Oh, here's this, where we stayed again at Rudolf Hess's house. Pretty fancy house. And oh, that's a, a lousy picture. I'll, there are somebody. Again, I don't remember, I remember faces, but not the names. Say again, who is Rudolf Hess? He was a... Uh, henchman of Adolf Hitler. Well, that's not a very good picture. This guy fairly well, but again, I don't remember names. Ah, a dog, look at that. you think I'd remember something about that, but I don't. Is that you on the right? It could be me on the right with a camera, yeah. Oh, and this guy on the left there is Lambert. I did get his name off of a picture I'd read, and that's me on the left with the helmet. 
and I don't have no idea what the horses were. But there they are. This must have been a place where we stayed again. There I am on the left. Huh, interesting. And I think that's me on the left again. Man, that's me as a technical sergeant. <laughs> well, okay. Back to the mountains. You can see these pictures are kind of messed up. So I apologize for that. Probably I should have been smarter than picked them out in a certain order, but I didn't. That looks like a train. Hmm. Again, uh, after the war, I was in the district transportation office, which ran the railroads in southern Germany. Ooh, look at the mountain in there. Oh, yeah. Background. Yeah. Huh? Well, hey, now how's that one? <laughs> there I am with my ribbons and everything. My hat. You have that coat now, I think. <laughs> well, we must have been up high. Of course, in Germany, you have a lot of castles around. We don't have any, anything like that in this country. And of course, the very old towns, much older than here, and very, very different architecture. I kind of wish I knew a little more what these places were, but all I can say is they're southern Germany. Beautiful mountains. Yeah, beautiful mountains is right. And that looks like kind of a dam or an irrigation thing. These must be pictures from prints. And again, there's a typical town in Bavaria. Of course, we did a lot of traveling around on leave, I guess. They needed something for us to do, so we just travel around. It looks like a railroad station or something. Hmm. And a horse and a cart. What do you know? <coughs> Well, I think I'll pause a minute. There's uh, too many of these. It's a town with the houses. That's good, too. Yeah, well, these are sort of interesting. I hope it won't bore you. You can see what the roads looked like and what the buildings were like. Notice there are very few people in the pictures. But that's not by design. It's just there weren't that many people around. I have no idea what that is. More snow-capped mountains. This must have been in the fall of the year. Let's see, that would be the fall of uh, 45. And of course, you're likely to find very old buildings here going way, way back. Ah, now we're, I know where we're here now. We're on leave in Switzerland. Let me pause this a minute. That's one of the buildings in the League of Nations buildings in Geneva, Switzerland. Beautiful buildings. This was League of Nations, of course, came in after World War I. And things got really messed up because the United States and the Senate uh, voted to withdraw from the League of Nations, and that really was one of the main things that brought on uh, World War II. But anyway, we visited the League of Nations buildings when we were on leave. I'll go on with it here now. It was really a tragedy that the United States withdrew after World War II. We did a little better because there was a Marshall Plan that helped our enemies recover, and a lot. And we had the United Nations, which of course is a much better arrangement in the League of Nations. That's me, I think. Yeah. Thank you. It's going to take the world a long time to get get their act together, I think. But this is a very beautiful setting on Lake Geneva. And this is the town of Geneva. This is where I bought a watch here, which I still have. 
You know, so architecture here is quite a bit more modern because this was uh, much more recent. That looks like there are birds on that guy's shoulder, doesn't it? <laughs> he must be a person that feeds the pigeons. That's a, some kind of a lighthouse or something on Lake Geneva, right in the town. And we got a little older buildings in the town. Oh, a typical train. Now most all the trains in Switzerland are electric electric trains. They generate power back in the system when they go downhill. <laughs> oh really? Uh huh. Oh. This is the famous castle of Chalon, which is on Lake Geneva. We visited there and there was some famous person that had been in the dungeon there or something. I don't know. I don't remember the details, but the castle of Chalon is in a lot of literature. This is again a ta in the town of Geneva. I think this is probably the fellow I went with. We kind of had a buddy system. Hey boy, pretty dressed up there. Whoo! The birds look a little different there than they do here. That's looking down at the top of the castle or, or yeah. Uh, inside. These aren't too good of pictures. I guess it wasn't a very good day. Ah, this boat went around Lake Geneva and took people on excursions or from one city to another. There were about three or four cities around the lake. It's a pretty large lake. And on the other side of the lake there was a railroad or, or cogwheel railway went up in the mountains, which you'll see some pictures of in just a second. I think. Again, this is Geneva. Huh, wonder where the people are. Ah, here we're back in the mountains now. And this was in, again, this is the fall, or I think it was October 1945. Uh, no, that can't be right. No, this is in the spring. You notice the tunnels there for the Cogwheel Railway? It went up very, pretty high, and of course they had to protect it from the snow. No, this is not October. This would be April or May. No, maybe March. And there were these buildings up at the top where the railroad went to. It was a ski resort, of course. Most beautiful. There was, uh, wasn't a very good day we were up there, but uh, a lot of snow. Very few skiers. They hadn't gotten up there or something yet. Oh, yeah, there's a railroad track. You see the third thing in the center over there was the cog, where the cog on the train drove it. Had a lot of snow. Haha, <laughs> yeah, there you go. How's that for a lot of snow? Again, this is uh, just a very late winter. So it wasn't real cold. But the snow obviously hadn't melted. Ah, I was taken, really taken by this. This was an interesting trip. I really enjoyed it. Going up on the cogwheel train. Didn't do any skiing, though. Well, I guess there really wasn't any way to do that. Besides, I didn't know how anyway. Must have been fairly stormy that day, or foggy or something. This is, now this is on the uh, east side of Lake Geneva. I think it's Montreux. Is the name of the town where the train went from. But you can see I was really taken by this and took a lot of pictures. Which is typical Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect they have, this is avalanche country too. Yeah. Amazing. These are probably well-known mountains. You can see the railroad down there. I don't know the clips of it there, but there was a... You can see the railroad track. Yeah, here's again the railroad track and one of the sheds, I think. Pretty rugged drought. Ah, 
I don't remember walking around on this much, but there I am on the snow, so I suspect it was fairly deep. Again, we must have been instructed to be on our best behavior and be really dressed up. Because mm -hmm. we <laughs> normally didn't dress like this for the everyday stuff. My buddy there, though, doesn't have a tie. My, my. Mm -hmm. Hotel Baron. That sort of rings a bell. I think we probably stayed there. They put the GIs up in Swiss hotels and fed us their normal food. Again, the electrical, electric operated sweet streetcars. <laughs> there you go. That's a 10th Armored Division patch there above the star stripes. My goodness, I look young. Mm -hmm. You were. <laughs> yeah, I guess I was. Well, we're back to the. I suspect we're back to Bavaria now, but I'm not sure about that. Thun, there you go. You can figure out where Thun is. It's either in Switzerland or it's in southern Germany. My guess is probably Switzerland. Yeah. Again, you see a few bicycles and very few people. Ooh, look at them now. Hey, yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Mm. Typical Swiss houses. Well, I don't know. Hmm, no, there's a railroad. Notice the cars are so short. This is typical in Europe. Much different than our cars here in this country. But I suspect that's changed by now. like uh, baggage cars or freight cars in the back there. Well, it's just very interesting because, boy, I was in the mountains most of the time in southern Germany and Switzerland. And of course, when we went to the Riviera, it's pretty hilly there. They're not exactly high mountains, but these certainly were. I came across an old map of the route I took in Switzerland, in case you're interested in looking at it sometime. There, you see how the short the cars were? This is really typical European again. Maybe they had to be short because of all the curves. That could be, because of the winding track, yep. I bet that's right. But I do remember though the cars in Germany were kind of short too, and, and you know, just in regular mm. flat places in Germany. That's probably some special mountain, but I don't know what it is. It's interesting, if you look at a map of Switzerland, it's just full of, the railroads are just full of tunnels. One tunnel right after another. And I assume, I don't know, this is some lake in Switzerland, but I don't know. Looks like we had a boat ride. That looks like a, a refugee train. From the looks of it. Of course, there were a lot of refugees after the World War II. Aha! Back to, well, I don't know whether this is Switzerland or not. <laughs> Look at the bottle of pop there and an ice cream cone. Oh, some kind of a PX. That's what it was. And this is a river with barges and locks. And I guess I can't tell you what the river is. I thought at first it might have been the Rhine River, but I don't think so. I think this is a river in Switzerland. I don't know whether those are depots or castle are. Oh, here's a castle for sure. Yeah, I'll pause that a minute because I can find a pause button. Whoops, I missed it. Uh, actually, we stayed in a castle once in Germany. Oh dear, I don't know where that is. That's a good picture. I like that. You like that? Mm -hmm. Grandma says she likes that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we're back in Germany now, I believe. 
on one of the lakes in southern Bavaria. Oh, so this might be a river in southern Germany. I, I guess I don't know. I really don't know. I suppose if you're familiar with the area, you recognize by the oh, there's a whole bunch of guys lined up for chow, and this is a, a, a typical barracks, which we would have stayed in. Quonset huts. I think that's me. Yeah, notice the guys are all carrying mess kits. <laughs> of course, it was typical to line up like that for everything. That's the locks. I kind of wish I knew where this was. Something about Franchise de Credit. Credit. Bunch of kids. Looks like summertime. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Hmm. Oh, a whole lot of kids. That's funny, I don't remember this at all. My guess is we're back on the Riviera now. <laughs> well, these are kind of a crazy bunch of mixed up pictures. But feel free to fast forward them. Some girls and this this is in Nice, France, on the on the Riviera. So I remember that, but I don't remember anything about the girls. Of course, we call this fraternization when we the soldiers, of course, were interested in girls, as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. But we weren't allowed to fraternize at all. That was that was verboten. Mm. Huh. That's interesting. This looks like we're going back a little earlier. Oh, this is interesting. This Gustavus Victory is the boat I came back to the United States on. And there are some pictures here of the boat which are very interesting. I don't remember the boat very well, but it's nice to have these pictures. These were called Victory ships, and there were literally thousands of them built during World War II. That's a debarkation area 11. And, of course, everybody lined up with their luggage to get ready to get on the boat. And about what is the date? This would be, uh, let's see, I left for the U.S. May 46. And that was a town, somewhere in the town we left from, but I don't know the name of the town. Somewhere in France. We shipped out. I think I'm getting ready to get on the boat. <laughs> ah, there's a piece of this luggage there. Oh, this is a, a, a group of prisoners, I assume. But I don't know that. That's funny. I mean, going back to the States, why would there still be prisoners? Well, anyway, this is the boat. And that's another one, another uh, victory ship, the Westminster Victory. And again, these were produced, mass-produced in World War II to transport troops and all other kinds of things. The crossing from France to New York took about 11 days. Of course, going over, I went over on the Queen Elizabeth, which was a little faster. These were really kind of old tubs. And there's some interesting stories written about these boats. I think they were prone to break in two. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the gangplank to get up to the boat. Mm. Kind of exciting. Huh. Anyway, going home was pretty exciting, I'll say that. Looks like me. Looks like you're eager to go. Yeah. <laughs> I certainly was. I will never forget coming into New York Harbor and seeing the Statue of Liberty. Mm. Now, why I didn't take pictures of that, I don't know. You never know. I mean, it's funny when you look back. You a lot of things you would have taken pictures of if you had thought about it, but you didn't. I mean, this was we were right there at the time. No 
Atlantic. On the hand boat. This is on the boat, yeah, going across the Atlantic. Ooh, the water looks pretty rough here. Oh, I remember being on guard duty at night and the boat rolling back and forth. Like, you just can't believe it. Mm. You go down almost to the water and it would roll up about way up in the air, maybe 100 feet. Just all the time, back and forth. So these were kind of like old tubs. And but then, for, huh? Did they all take their turn tossing the cookies over the side? <laughs> well, by this time, I guess we'd gotten used to it. I don't know. Why? But I remember a, a guard duty one night talking to a black soldier from the south, the Atlanta area, and that was interesting because he was going to, of course, to a completely different country than I was going to. Because he was going where the south was still segregated and a mess. Hmm. Well, we're back in Europe now, I guess. So that was a little, <laughs> I guess, a little bit out of order. I don't know where this is. Looks like some kind of a fancy place. This is probably again in southern Germany. That looks like a church. Which we really call cathedrals there. Oh, back to the burned bears. <laughs> We're getting around here now. I tell you, I should have done a little better sorting. And this is probably some famous statue. No clothes on, oh dear. And again, I'm not sure where this is. You read the signs there. Maybe if you pause this, you might be able to tell. Oh, there's some more people here. This is interesting. But again, I guess this, this is Germany. Hmm. Well, an open-air fruit market. And inside, I expect this might be a train station with murals painted up on the walls. Ah, back to the boat. Well, I hope this doesn't mess you up too much to be going around. Hey, well, I think this is the Maginot Line in France that France built to keep the Germans from invading, which didn't work. It's the mentality that tries to prevent things from happening by throwing up barricades. It's sort of like the mentality on the ballistic missile defense system right now. You think that's going to work, but it's not. They tried it after World War I. It didn't work. On a different scale, of course. Basel. Aha! Now that's Switzerland. So here we are back in Switzerland. To our American friends coming to Switzerland. Well, I guess you have to read that and pause. Typical railroad yard and that river again, wherever this is. I guess this is probably Switzerland. Hmm. Hmm. Well, now if it had been smart, I'd have written on some of these what they were. That one's a garage. Yeah, and it was in English. That's interesting. Yeah. That must be one or a streetcar. Oh, back to the boat. <laughs> no point in this because you don't know where it is. It looks like Grandpa went fishing. Or else fish that somebody else caught. Huh. This may be back in Germany now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're back to the Autobahn now, right after the war on the old plains. <laughs> oh my. Well... That's the way it goes when you don't get organized. Funny. I wanted to add a couple other things about the trip overseas at the beginning of the... When I left the United States, that was in, uh, let's see, what was the date here? May... Hmm. Oh, March 25th, 1945. We left from New York, on, of course, the Queen Elizabeth that I mentioned earlier. And that was kind of weird because it, you were, it was a time of war and everything was sort of censored. We left in the middle of the night and we didn't know when, where we were going. We just knew we were going on a boat and overseas. So I left my, or sent my parents a telegram that just 
said Oceans of Love. I couldn't say anything about where we were going or what we were going. But anyway, that was it, and it was kind of strange going in a dock somewhere in the New York area where the Queen Elizabeth was tied up, and we got on pitch dark. Of course, the dock was lighted on the boat, and then we set off for sailing, and after that we got on the boat, then we knew where we were going. We ended up in Glass, let's see, somewhere in Scotland. Hmm, can't remember now. But anyway, it was interesting. This Again, this was in wartime, so the Queen Elizabeth took a evasive path. And if you looked out the back of the boat, where the boat had gone, it was just zigzagged. It didn't go in a straight line. And of course, it went fast enough so the submarines couldn't catch it. So that's, it was a safety thing. And that was kind of interesting. And of course, this was all after a lot of the stuff going on in this country, but I don't have a record of that. I don't have any pictures. Um, Sometimes if you're interested, I can tell you where I was in this country, which amounted to Georgia. I had basic training in Georgia. And then I had the artillery training in Kansas. And one of the interesting things about that, we used to travel across the country by train and there was no sleeping accommodations. You just slept on the floor any way you could, and they were pretty crowded. I remember going through Chicago and changing trains. Again, of course, this was in wartime, and very different than it is now. But I, I don't remember a lot of that. But anyway, that's the end of the story. A bit about the traveling in Germany by train during wartime. I forgot this. Uh, of course, we traveled across the English Channel at night, and that was all secretive. Everything was dark. And we got to France. We loaded on trains. There were boxcars. There were famous 40 and 8 boxcars in France, which uh, were also used in World War One. They carried 40 men or 8 horses. Oh. <laughs> and this, the combinations were really primitive there. These weren't even cars. There's no chairs. You just a boxcar. And you slept the best you could on the floor on your bag. And there was about maybe 20, 25 other men in this car. And that was that was a new experience. It's just completely different than you, you can imagine. How far did you go that way? Well, we went all the way to, uh, we finally ended up in long summer along the Rhine River where we joined our unit. Yeah. Well, no, we joined a unit in southern Germany. I think it was Alm something like that, where we joined a unit. And of course, again, this was in wartime. But fortunately, pretty soon after that, within several weeks, the war was over. And we celebrated the end of the war in garmisch partenkirchen in Germany, which was interesting. Uh, let's see, there was something else I was going to tell you. Oh, going over on the Queen Elizabeth, it was really funny. We started out perfectly calm, and then by the time you hit the ocean, of the waves, all of a sudden again the boat started to roll. And this is funny, a big boat like that you'd think it would be pretty steady, but it wasn't. And I can remember very clearly everybody getting up in the morning for breakfast and all of a sudden it started to roll and man, people left the breakfast hall very quickly. <laughs> that was really funny. And, and the other experience that was interesting was going up and down the stairs. Uh, you, you went downstairs that were perpendicular to the boat, the way the boat was rolling. So you either went down, you felt like you're, were, you just couldn't make any progress at all, or you went really fast. <laughs> it was a strange sensation. I've never had that before. Well, I, I gotta, we got to quit this. I'll, I'll stop it now, and that's it. <laughs>